welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up, we've got Continental GP5000 tires, a prototype SRAM group set spotted in Japan, hot Taipei tech, your upgrades, the bike vault, and more. Yeah, well, not forgetting our main talking point this week, are rim brakes going to be extinct in just two years? Oh. Anyway, nice to have you back, mate. How's the jet lag? Oh, I'm pretty knackered. Is that why you're drinking coffee? <laughs> yeah. This is the new Continental GP5000, which replaces the GP4000. And according to Continental, it's been 12 years in the making. And well, yeah, they reckon it has the following improvements over the GP4000. Well, yeah, starting with 12% less rolling resistance. Now they've attributed that to uh, refining the actual compound of the rubber, their own proprietary black chili, and then also upping the thread count on the carcass. So now 330 threads per inch, a bit like your Egyptian sheets. I... Uh, only the best, only the best for me. Also, more punch protection, 20% in fact, and that's attributed to an improved Vectran breaker. And then, not to be sniffed at, five gram weight saving. Every little helps, remember? And it's also said to be more comfortable and to reduce vibration, uh, which is apparently down to a new way in which Continental constructs the tire. But for more information, we have a first look video on the new GP5000, so tech that out. Ah, in that video, uh, Ollie, you say that it has a sexy little box. And actually, well, although I chuckled at the time, <laughs> it does have a sexy little it's, box. It, so uh, there is. we go. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, a nice package. Nice package all round. Anyway, moving on, as we mentioned at the top of the show, it looks like SRAM have a prototype group set out in the wild. We say it looks like because it's covered uh, in masking tape, but it is on the Team Katusha bikes and they're sponsored by SRAM. Anyway, ETAP, yes. 12 speed, yes, but all sorts of other very cool looking features. Yeah, we actually showed this in the GCN show, but it's so hot and so cool, we thought we'd show it you again. And John Cannings was on the ground at the site arm crit and actually spotted it. So take it away, John. Well guys, I don't know if you know this, but I'm in Japan this week at the Saitama Criterium. Whilst here, I've just managed to actually see this. It looks to be a 12-speed prototype group set from SRAM. So we've got a different style design of the rear derailleur, as you can see. It's covered up here with a little bit of black tape. The cassette, that's a 1028. That's right, a 10-tooth sprocket. Uh, look at the chain as well. It's actually got flat outer edges on it. So it's similar to that, what you'd find on a BMX bike or something like that, where they go grinding on rails, I understand. Uh, chain set though, look at that, a total and utter redesign. And get this, a 50-tooth and a 37-tooth chain rings. Because of course, if you've got a 10-tooth sprocket at the rear, you don't need a big 53 plate to play with anymore, do you? A 50 will be absolutely spot on. That looks to be a new quark power meter too. On to our main talking point this week, which is, are rim brakes going to become extinct in the next two years? Well, I've just got back from the Taipei bike show, and while I was there- How's that jet lag now? I'm, st I'm st still, st still on the coffin. Uh, but while I was there, I was able to chat to Mark van der Molen, who is the MD of Vision and FSA in the United States. Yeah, now considering that Vision are a pretty huge wheel company selling both direct to us, the consumer, and also directly to bike manufacturers, he's clearly in quite a privileged position with quite a lot of insight. So Mark, what um, with regards to disc brakes, like what what's going to happen? What's the future of disc brake wheel sets? Disc brake road, uh, it's it's happening. It's, it's maybe it's already happened, depending on who you want to ask. Uh, we're likely at the tipping point as far as the market goes between uh, rim brake bikes that you're going to see at the floor of your local dealer uh, and disc brake bikes, which are you know currently heavy in development. Uh, whether that's an aero bike, whether that's a TT or a tri bike, all the way through road bikes, and obviously gravel is huge. Uh, so what you're seeing now is that we, you know we might be at that point where you know, by this time next year, you're going to find that you know all those bikes that you're seeing at your local shop are going to start to turn out to be disc brake bikes. And so, you know, that's just one part of the, you know, what's happening with wheels because with disc brake, I think you're also going to be finding, uh, you know, wider rims and with wider rims, you're going to find uh, wider tires. You're also going to find tubeless ready. 
So with regards to sales of wheels, as a wheel supplier, sort of what proportion are you currently seeing disc brake and rim brake? Yeah, so for example, I mean, the, the bikes that are being spec'd and set up right now, I mean, those bikes are gonna be for sale uh, next summer. You know, those bikes will be launched. Uh, they're, you know, they would call it like a model year 20 bike. Uh, it'll be sold in calendar year 19, mid-season. Uh, you're gonna see a majority, if not all, of the performance level bikes for that will all be disc brake. Really? Yeah. That's, so that's, so it's, it's coming? Yeah, it's, it's coming. I mean, that, that wave is coming, that tsunami has started. Maybe it started a long time ago. Uh, but, you know, I, I think some bike brands have, you know, they've kind of hedged their bets and they've offered some models, both in rim brake and in disc brake. You know, but with the UCI kind of going to, you know, the legalization of disc brake, like full on, uh, you know, Ironman Hawaii, you know, with bike course records being set on disc brake bikes. I mean, I think, I think the, you know, like any hurdles that might have been there from an aerodynamic perspective or from a sporting perspective, uh, you know, those are being removed. And so by you know by next year, I think you know it'll be interesting to see what happens at the at the tour and you know next summer and what's going on with disc brake there and what's happening at the spring classics. But you know for sure the disc brake is here. Do you think that we'll also so so you're saying that it's going all disc brake, but do you think we will see the death of tubular tires and it will be clincher disc brake wheels? Is is that something that you thought about at, at Vision? Uh, I mean a little bit. Um, I think. I think there's still some performance gains to be had from tubular, uh, especially it may be, you know, you know, say for track, for example, uh, you know, obviously tubular is, is, is a needed necessity because of safety. Uh, but also looking at, you know, at maybe at some premium level performance where tubular is still going to be able to yield a result that clincher might not quite be able to touch. Cl clinchers are arguably as nice depending on who you ask. It's a, it's a very heated debate for sure. Um, I mean, if, you know, we're talking about disc brake and rim brake and clincher and tubular in the same we're conversation. All the fires. Yeah, we're, we're doing everything we can to stir up the pot here. So it's, it's definitely, you know, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, you know, having ridden both, uh, you know, depending on what that application was um, and what my, you know, what my ride might be, I might choose something different. Uh, you know, but from like a, a pro tour perspective, they still do prefer tubular in a lot of cases. Um, however, you do find that that you know they're starting to go clincher, and they're also starting to look at tubeless ready. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things that can be done with there. So one last thing, prediction time. How long do you reckon it's going to be before it, all, all road bikes are just disc, as in every sort of road bike that's new bike that's new bikes. sold. Yeah. New bikes that are new bikes that are sold uh, at a you know at a performance level. Uh, I think that the bikes that we will see, I think by by next year, by 2019 calendar year, I think what we'll see is you know, probably 80 to 90% of the bikes that are new bikes that are gonna come out are gonna be disc brake. And I think by 20, I think we'll be, we'll be there. I, you know, I, maybe, uh, maybe it'll be longer, but I'm thinking by 20, we'll be there. So by a couple of years. Yeah, not even, not even. There you have it. So. Two years, all disc. Awesome, thanks a lot hey. for your time. All thanks right, thank you. Much. Cheers. Cheers. All right, there you have it. Mm -hmm. Two years. I guess we should uh, start the countdown. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea of a countdown clock, but do you know that sound effects we'll get wearing over two years? Should we lose that bit? <laughs> yeah, let's lose that bit. Right, Ollie, what do you think, mate? Is, is he talking the truth? Well, it's interesting, but I think we should just make it clear. Rim brakes will still exist. They're not all going to be eradicated like the dinosaurs. Not a dinosaur extinction, okay. No <laughs> volcanoes here, yeah. um, meteorites. But what Mark is suggesting is that all the new bikes for sale and available in the shops will just be disc brakes. Yeah, I kind of know what he's saying, but I mean, when we've seen tech become extinct in the past, like down tube shifters, I don't think there were really any merits of down tube shifters over what replaced them, i.e. Shimano STI and so on and so forth. Whereas with rim brakes, there is still a definite advantage in certain applications. They are cheaper, they are easier to set up, and they're still lighter, aren't they? Yeah, it's a good point. And, you know, personally, unless disc brakes get lighter than rim brakes in the next two years, for specialist applications like hill climbing, I would want a rim brake bike. Where well, you don't have to use your brakes, you mean? Well, yeah. Yeah, no, fair point. What about you all at home? What do you think on this subject? I imagine 
it's going to be some uh, some pretty hot, heated responses to this. So uh, get involved in the comment section. Any advocates of save the rim brake? Let us know. Um, more tech now. Now, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this already in the show, but I've just got back from the Taipei bike show. No. Yeah, well, much? Asia's biggest cycle industry trade show. It's huge, and Taiwan is well, arguably the manufacturing capital for the bike industry these days. So there was loads of great stuff there. There was indeed. How's the jet lag now, Ollie? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm suffering a fair bit still. Uh, but one of the coolest things I saw was this, which is called the Hi-Core T1. Now this actually won an award at the Taipei show, and it's a wheel that is actually a sort of incorporated, well, it's a self-contained e-bike within a wheel. So you, in this tri-spoke design, you've got two 180 watt motors and a battery. And the idea is that you can convert your existing non-e-bike bike into an e-bike by simply putting in this wheel, which I think is a really neat idea, and like, it means you don't need to buy a complete new bike, and it's cool. That does look quite cool, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, now one of the things I particularly liked from your videos, Ollie, was the new, more affordable Gates Carbon Belt Drive. As a, as a system, I think it's great, particularly for applications like commuting, because the belt drive is almost maintenance-free, certainly when you compare it to a conventional chain drive. I mean, for a start, you don't need to clean it which is mind blowing. But typically you've only ever found Gates Carbon Belt Drives on bikes over about $1,000. But they reckon that they are now able to manufacture it using composite materials and so that it's gonna be able to appear on bikes around the $500 mark which is pretty cool for commuters, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's always great to see tech trickling down into more affordable price points. Yeah. I'm always a big fan of that. Um, um, something else which caught my eye uh, was these new glasses from a company called... See what you did there? Yeah, <laughs> these new glasses from a company called Tri-Eye. Now, they're actually a really simple idea. They feature a small and discreet mirror that's either in the bottom left or bottom right of the glasses, depending on which side of the road you ride on. And the idea... I here... did have a chuckle in your video. <laughs> what side of the road do we drive on in England? The jet lag. And then um, the idea is that this is, you, know, you can use this as a rear view mirror, and it's just a really neat but simple solution that could improve road safety for cyclists. So yeah. that's a good idea. Uh, you know what, I'd actually be quite interested to try that. I've never felt the need to have a rear view mirror when I cycle, but then never has there been an option that's quite so discreet. Yeah. So uh, yeah, very interesting. Uh, Canyon have clearly been busy with launching their 2019 bikes, including this one, which caught my eye last week. It's the new aluminium grail, so the aluminium version of their gravel bike that's existed in carbon up until now. Because it's aluminium, it's more affordable. The entry level is 1,099 pounds, about 1,300 euros. And just look at it, that is one sexy bike. That is a looker, isn't yeah. it? I mean, well, gone is the Marmite carbon hover bar, yeah. which some people love and some people hate, but without it, I mean, that's, that is a really smart looking bike. It is, isn't it? Now, you'd think probably it's not gonna be as smooth as the carbon version, because uh, the uh, really clever seat post uh, fixing on the carbon one is gone, and of course, it doesn't have that hover bar, which is designed to make life particularly smooth, but yeah. What a seeming bargain. Uh, we've actually got a video where we look in depth at the Carbon Grail and also their Carbon in-flight cyclocross bike because we put the two head to head. Gravel bike versus cross bike, what's the difference? Yeah, we invented a new sport as well. We did. Called Gravel Cross. Oh yeah. I was rubbish at it. All will be revealed on GCN on Sunday, so make sure you check that one out. We are pleased to be able to announce some winners for you on the tech show right now because we've wrapped up some of our wicked unboxings. And so first up, we've got the Cyclic Fly 12 CE and the Cyclic Fly 6 CE camera lights. Okay, you ready for this? Your winners are Jake Park from Canada, Stephen Vernester from Belgium, Edward Ngay from Austria, Alan Cruckle from the US and Aaron Perry from the US as well, probably Aaron. Do they call him Aaron? Aaron? I don't know. We, <laughs> we call him Aaron here. <laughs> we also have the lucky winners of the Sigma Rocks giveaway too. Uh, so we have Philip Shellback from Germany and John Kinder from Great Britain. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations to all of you. You should have heard from us already, but if you haven't, ta-da! Surprise. 
And for all of you that haven't won, do not worry, because there's another unboxing coming up very soon. And as ever, it's a cracker. Screw riding upgrades, buy upgrades, where you submit before and after photos of upgrades that you've done to your equipment or bikes for a chance to win the ultimate trophy, the prestigious GCN apron slash cape. Capron. Nice. And how do they submit, Ollie? Using the uploader link in the description below. Right then. Well, before we get on to this week's submissions, we got last week's results, haven't we? You will remember them, I'm sure. We had Mark and Kim's tandem versus Scott's ultimate Zwift setup. And the results, can you guess? No, what was it? 58% went for Mark and Kim's tandem. So there we go. And they actually sent two caperons out. Well, yeah, you're gonna have there's to. There's two of them, we can't share it, can they? No. Do you know what's really crazy though, right? And I looked at this, I recognise that bike. I've seen that bike being ridden in the Mendips. No, that's yeah. like our local, we're not calling range of hills, but most yeah. of you would laugh at the description, but really? Yeah, well, I, 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 I just, Weird. I assume it was Mark and Kim riding it. I mean, if it wasn't and it's been stolen, it's, it's somewhere in the Mendips, last seen. Last week, we had a Mercs head-to-head -head between the modern 525 Mercs of the AG2R team versus the retro 1969 Mercs as ridden by Eddie himself. The winner, with a whopping 74%, was the modern 525. Yes! Get it! So I'm quite pleased about that. Yeah, I am quite pleased. Well, no. I mean, I love the retro one, don't get me wrong, but anyone who watched last week will know I'm not a massive fan of Maltini colours. And I'm really relieved that, that obviously a lot of you uh, are not fans of Maltini colours. I quite, I quite like it, actually. Really? Yeah. You like a, like a brown cycling kit. It's slightly <laughs> ironic, actually, given that he's sponsoring the AG2R team with their brown, brown shorts. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, Anyway. Well, yeah, I've not thought about that, actually. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place now. <laughs> anyway, let's move on, shall we, to this week's uh, Bike of the Week, where there are no brown bikes, no brown cycling kit, thank goodness. But the shorts will be brown. They will, because it's Cyclocross Week. John Cannings, as you'll have seen, no doubt, was over in Belgium checking out, getting his grubby hands, in fact, on some Cyclocross tech. One of those bikes was from newly crowned under 23 European cyclocross champ, Tom Pidcock. It's this really rather fetching specialized crux. And what does it go up against, Ollie? It's going up against Matteo van der Poel's Canyon Inflight, which we have a video up on the tech channel. So you can check that out in more detail. Indeed, if already sprayed up as European champ. So it's got a special colorway. It's quite an interesting one, this one, isn't it? We've got SRAM on Pidders. We've got uh, Shimano on van der Poel. Bit of a contrast going on. Yeah, some nice tan wall side tyres on both though. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta love cyclocross for the tubs. Anyway, get involved, let us know your vote. Bike Vault time, where you submit pictures of your bikes and we judge them. They're either nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, they get submitted into the Bike Vault and we ring, where's the bell? Johnny's bell, it's up there mate. There we go. Right then. Do you want to ring the bell? You don't get to ring it as often as I do. No, I'll have my fingers in my ears when you do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't want to. All right. Don't want to get near it, thanks. Uh, right then, what's first, Ollie? First up, we have this awesome Cervelo Soloist from 2006, which has been submitted by Lars, who's from, well, Germany, near Munich. I'm going to say, Ollie, background aside, I'm loving this because that, that's like, that's like a modern icon, isn't it? That's yeah. a classic bike that you've got your hands on last. But not only that, you've made it look absolutely drop dead gorgeous with a selection of kind of period, correct, and modern components on there. Yeah. It's wheels, it's like 3T Orbis C40 limited wheels. Nice. Yeah. I it's mean, an important frame there as well, isn't it? Well, it is important. Oh, it's Carlos Sastra, uh, famously won riding the soloist. Who was, uh, which team did he? I forgot, um, I can't remember the name of the to be fair, actually, he won riding for CSC. It was when yeah. he went and he had some sloppy teammates at Cervelo Test Team yeah. and he suddenly lost the ability to win. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't have the team support, did he? Yeah, I think anyway. it's fair to say. Anyway. Yeah. What were we going to say? I, th I think there's That's only it. one conclusion we can draw from that, Ollie. 
super nice. Super nice. Right then, next up, we've got this one from William, who sent it in from Cowick... Chan? Cowick and Bay? Anyway, nice Vancouver place. Island. It does look amazing, doesn't it? And what a bike, a BH Ultralight RC. Campy again, Campagnolo Record. Ooh, Campagnolo Record EPS. Yeah, very I, cool. I, I know where that is. So I've been there. I've been at a Sasol. What? Yeah. Sasol. What is we, what? Oh yeah, I saw that tandem when I was out on my bike. <laughs> oh yeah, that random shot of an island. Yeah, no, yeah, I've, I've uh, been there. I've been, I've been to Salt Spring Island. It's a very nice place. Yeah, very nice place. But um, there's, yeah, phospholuminescent plankton in the water around there. Very nice. Anyway, uh, we digress. But that is very. Uh, yeah, it's a very neat bike. I like the blue bar tape, the way that matches yes. the highlights on the front. very nicely done. It's quite easy to get wrong, matching bar tape, it isn't is, it? Yeah. But that is a prime prime example, William. Nice work. Oh, it's just, it's all very neat and tidy. Matching bottles, cages, all looking on, on point there. I love those Bontrager wheels as well, R3 tubeless. Uh, oh, and he said, this is my fourth or fifth photo try for the bike vault. Love the shape. Well, oh, there you we know go. what, right? I think fourth or fifth try, I think he's nailed it. He has nailed it. Yeah. I can't fault that, mate. No. Super nice. He's in. What's next, mate? Next up, we have um, this Boardman Pro Carbon, which has been taken. This photo has been taken in one of my stomping grounds. Where I like to Used to be up. mine as well, mate. Yeah, and Lasty's and as indeed, well. Yeah. Um, up at Monsell Head in the Peak District in England. It's a sort of well, very famous uh, backdrop that. But. Uh, the Boardman Pro Carbon, nice. I like the way he's got yellow bar tape to match the highlights on the frame. And for me, yeah. that's a it was a classic bike, the Boardman Pro Carbon. It's about eight years ago it came out, but it was um, a quintessential English scene with a quintessentially English bike. Yeah, well, it was a really affordable carbon bike at the time, you know, around a sort of thousand pound price point. But it's good to see that eight years on, it's well, still going strong. Yeah, I like that, mate. I do like that very much. Yeah, I mean, there's still there's a few little things niggling me on it, like the... Uh, Composition of the photo? Yeah, that's not quite right. I mean, uh, yeah, and, and the uncut steerer. I yeah. mean, it's been around a while, that bike, so you would have thought by now he would have dialed his position in if we're being picky, which we yeah. have to be. We do. Can't let any old bike into the bike hole. I think it's a nice. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I think it is a nice. I mean, it is really nice, Yeah. isn't it? But it doesn't quite... I mean, not... the crank arms aren't quite in the... He's, in, he's not in the big ring. It's nearly time for the end of the show. Yeah, bit of a damp scrib on the pipe bottom. And what's worse, Ollie, is that countdown clock. Rim brakes are going to become extinct in one year, 364 days, 23 hours, and, well, 50 minutes. Yeah. Well, well, not long, is it? No, it's plenty to look forward to. Coming up on the channel this weekend, we've got carbon wheels versus aluminium wheels. What's the difference? It's true, yeah, I am going to look forward to that. I'm also going to look forward to that aforementioned video on GCN on Sunday. Gravel bike versus cyclocross bike. What is the difference? Because that one is a little bit more subtle than aluminium versus carbon, isn't it? And yeah. also, if you're in the mood for some more videos right now, please make sure you check out Ollie's amazing, don't get a big head, amazing <laughs> video about how carbon fibre bikes are made when he went over to see Look in France and also in Tunisia. Make sure you check that one out. I am pleased with how it turned out that one. That was cool, mate. That was a great watch. <laughs>